Toyota Time with Timmy the Tool Man and Sean. Today, we have two special guests in attendance, my buddy Ton and his buddy Viet. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna be working on Viet's GX470. His center differential lock isn't working like it should. When he pushes the center differential lock button, the display blinks, but it never goes solid to let him know that he has the center diff locked. So we're gonna do some troubleshooting with this and hopefully be able to figure it out. For this job, we actually have a used actuator that we can use as a backup in case we find that Viet's actuator is bad. I got this from a guy named Andrew who lives about an hour and a half away from me. He was very nice to donate this. He didn't charge me a dime. I just had to drive an hour and a half to his house to get it and drive an hour and a half back but it was super nice for him to donate this. So thank you very much, Andrew. We really appreciate you giving us this actuator for this video. All right, so we're gonna get Viet's rig into my garage. We're gonna jack it up to get all four wheels off the ground and we're gonna start diagnosing the system to see what's wrong with it. Here we go. Before we jack up the vehicle to do some testing inside the garage, we're gonna test it out by moving the vehicle back and forth with the center diff lock engaged to see if we feel that the locker is engaged or is not engaged. We have the vehicle on. Viet's gonna push the center diff lock button. You'll see that it's blinking, but it's not going solid like it should go solid. So now we're gonna back up. We're gonna turn the wheel and we're gonna see if we can get at the lock and listen to what we can hear. Feel any binding? It feels like a lot of resistance. Okay, so with the wheel cranked and the center diff lock engaged, but with the display still blinking, it sort of feels like it is locking, but we're not getting the light to go solid to indicate that it is fully locked. It might be a problem with the actuator. There is a little micro switch in there and maybe the micro switch is bad and it's not letting the four wheel drive ECU know that the center diff is locked. That's enough for this test. We have the rig jacked up with all four wheels off the ground because we wanna be able to test if the center diff lock is actually working and the indicator light blinking is a false reading. When Viet has the center diff lock button unlocked, no display on the dash, I should be able to turn the front drive shaft. When he pushes the button and it looks like it's starting to lock and it's blinking, if it's actually locking, I won't be able to turn that front drive shaft. If it indeed is not locking, I will still be able to turn that drive shaft even though he's pushed the button to lock it. Letting us know that the blinking we're seeing on the dash cluster is accurate. It's actually not locking like it should. I'm underneath the rig. I'm shooting from the passenger side looking towards the driver's side. You have your exhaust right here, and then here's your transfer case, and then this is the actuator box right here, and you can see the rear drive shaft. So Viet is gonna get inside the cab. He's gonna turn the ignition key to the on position, and we're gonna do the first test. So Viet's turning the ignition key to the on position, and right now we're testing to see that we can turn the front propeller shaft with the center diff lock not actuated. So I am clearly able to turn the front drive shaft, no problem. Okay, so now we're gonna get inside the cab and Viet's gonna push the center diff lock button and then we're gonna see if this is locked and we can't turn it, letting us know that the center diff lock is working. If it's not working, I'm still gonna be able to turn this front drive shaft freely. I'm not sure if the audio is gonna pick it up, but I can clearly hear when he pushes the button, it makes a beeping sound, and then when the rod is actuating, it makes a very slight buzzing sound. So go ahead and hit the button, see if we could hear that. I just hit the button. It's working. Nice. I cannot turn this drive shaft. So his 
center diff lock is working from what we just discovered. The problem is, is there's some miscommunication from the actuator to the four wheel drive ECU that's not telling the dash light to go solid. I'll now open up the actuator that we got from Andrew and I'll show you the switch that I believe might be malfunctioning and the reason why he's not getting a solid center diff lock light on his dash cluster. All right, I'm gonna discuss how you would take this apart so you can do an investigation of the internal parts. Normally there's screws in each one of these holes, but when I got it from Andrew, he didn't have the screws. He had lost them during a move. So you would take the screws out and then you would pry off this cover. Right here, there would be two other screws that hold in this electrical connector. If I'm remembered correctly, they're JIS or Phillips screws. So you remove two screws here and then you could pull this connector out. And what these four prongs are is this is part of the electrical connector right here. So those prongs stick through right through there. So that's what this is. This blue knob is a timing knob that I will discuss later when we're getting the gears timed right. You have one wheel here that you could pull out. This is missing a rod for this wheel. It goes right up against the motor here and it rides against this wheel that I just pulled out. Just imagine there's a rod there, just like this rod holding that in, but this was missing when Andrew gave it to me. So you would slide this one off the rod and set it aside. These rods can come out, so if it pulls out, don't be alarmed. They're not glued in. So then this one pulls out too. And you could see the gear right here that interfaces with the shift rod right here. And so when it locks and unlocks, the gears are either pushing the rod into the transfer case or they're drawing it back out. This little switch right here is the switch I believe might be bad on Viet's actuator because when this gear is turning around, locking and unlocking the center diff, you have this cam that's running up against that switch, letting the ECU know whether you're locked or unlocked. So we'll try to get a shot of that if we can. So concentrate your eyes on that little white switch. As the gear turns and it starts bringing the rod out into the transfer case, right now the cam is starting to hit the switch and it's fully engaging the switch, fully engaged, and then it's gonna run off the cam and the switch is gonna open back up. That's the switch that I believe might be the problem with Viet's actuator, that it's not letting the four wheel drive ECU know that the center diff is actually locking. This is the only electrical component I can see that could be letting the ECU know when it's locked and unlocked. It has to be that switch. So now we're gonna get underneath the rig and we're gonna take this cover off and start to disconnect the internal components so we can pull this box off the shaft easily. There is a method that I saw many people on YouTube do where they remove the mounting bolts. There's three of them. You got one here, one here, and one here. And then what they do is they twist the box and they're finally able to finagle it off the rod. I don't really prefer that method because I'm worried maybe we're possibly doing damage to the gears and we're messing up the timing of the gears by pulling back like that. So the way we're gonna do it is the same way I just showed you is we're gonna take the cover off, we're gonna take this connector off, we're gonna remove all the wheels, and then once the wheels are out, you'll just be able to slide the box right off the shaft. And then going back together is the same thing. You slide the shaft back in, and then you put the gears in one by one, assembling it on the transfer case itself, and then you get the cover back on and cross your fingers and hope you fix the problem. 
So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna be taking this cover off the bottom of the actuator. Since we're gonna be messing around with the internal components, I don't want any power going to it. So the electrical connector is right up here facing upward. The release tab is facing sort of towards the back of the vehicle. You push it and then get that off. So now we have no power to the actuator and we have the ignition key off. The cover is held on with six JIS or Phillips screws and I'm gonna start removing them. One thing that could be a possibility is if the shaft seal that prevents transfer case gear oil getting into the actuator box is compromised, this could be filled with gear oil right now. So this could be messy. So before I get the last screw out, I'm gonna get a catch basin underneath here just in case this thing is totally filled to the gills with gear oil. For this bottom screw, the transfer case skid is getting in the way a little bit, but I could still get on it okay. This actually looks like it might be some type of skid plate for the actuator. I think it is. I don't know what else it would, it would do. So I think this is actually like a little skid plate. So if a rock comes up, maybe it protects it. I don't know. There's one last one right here. So there's actually seven. So this thing has been on there for a while. It might take a little bit of prying. I just have this plastic tool. Oh, look at that. That's his problem that the seal that seals the shaft and prevents gear oil from getting in here is compromised because gear oil is already coming out of here. So that's one of the problems and maybe the reason why the switch in there failed. That's a lot of gear oil. Just gonna let that drip a little bit here. This thing is obviously filled to the gills with gear oil. We're just gonna let this thing empty out most of the way. We'll come back when it's mostly empty. What I noticed when I wanted to remove the cover all the way is this bottom bolt that holds the actuator to the transfer case is in the way of it dropping out. So I'm gonna zip it out with my DeWalt gun and a short extension and a 12 millimeter socket. So when I pull this off, there is a chance that one of the gears can fall out, but I'm not worried about that because I know where it goes. Slowly. Yeah, that one gear is coming out like I thought. So this is the gear that I thought might come out because all the other gears are captured. And here's the rod. You could see right here, there's a mix of the white lithium grease or whatever grease they're using and the gear oil on here. It's a big mess. And you could see the electrical connector and the two gears that I already showed you in the actuator that Andrew gave us. So what we wanna pay attention now while we're taking this apart is the position of the gears. What I'm already seeing is this line right here isn't lined up with the line on the case. It's over to the side a little bit. We're gonna get a paint pen and we're gonna mark this so we remember the position. From the look of it, this timing line on this gear is pretty much lined up with this screw hole on the case. But I'm gonna get my paint pen and I'm gonna mark that so we can't forget it. And then the other timing gear that I wanna pay attention what position it's in is the blue one that's on the underside of this piece right here. Those are the two that you really have to pay attention to to get the gear timing right. So now I'm gonna get these two screws out to be able to pull this out. The one thing I have to remember, as soon as I start pulling this piece out that has the electrical connectors connected to it, these gears can fall out right in my face. I have to hold pressure on these while I'm pulling this out. and it helps to have an extra set of hands. Viet is filming and holding it for me. <laughs> He's multitasking. Okay, second screw is out. I'm gonna hold pressure on these gears and then I'm gonna pull this out. 
And then I'm gonna ask Viet to hold those in position and I'm gonna take a quick look at the position of this switch. Okay, I got a good idea. It's interesting, it's not where I thought it would be, but that lets us know. So I'm gonna carefully put this aside so I don't end up mistakenly turning the dial. So this is what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the blue dial and it has a tiny little mark on it and I'm seeing where that mark lines up with the white case around it. And currently it's lined up right there. We'll show a better shot of this when we get it up on the top of my toolbox. So now I'll take over for Viet. I'll slide this gear off and then I'll pull this one out. And here's another thing you wanna take note of, the position of the shaft right now. It's clearly unlocked right now. I can turn the drive shaft so what that tells me is when it is locked, the shaft is coming out more and further into the case. And then here's the switch right here that I think might be bad because the switch was compromised with all this gear oil going through it. So now we're gonna remove the case completely from the transfer case. There's two other mounting bolts that I have to remove that are up above. And then there's a vacuum line we have to disconnect then we could easily slide the actuator off of the rod and disconnect it from the transfer case. So here's the vacuum hose. It's pretty common that people find that the hose is split and Viet actually saw that on his when he was trying to diagnose it on another occasion and he had to cut off the bad section of hose and then reattach it. So hopefully because he's recently done this, it's not gonna fight me too much coming off. And it is fighting me. <laughs> Come on, strong guy. I don't want to tear it, but it's definitely fighting me. I think I'm going to try to get a pick tool underneath there or get another thing where I could twist it and hopefully not break the hose anymore. So while I was trying to grab some tools, Viet just squeezed it and got it off. So he's obviously stronger than me and maybe has less greasy fingers. So I'm just going to put this connector over the top of the propeller shaft here and then kind of feed that one over there too hopefully it stays out of the way now we got to get to the other two bolts we're going to remove this 12 millimeter bolt that's facing the driver's side i broke it free with a regular ratchet now i'm going to zip it out with my milwaukee then the other one is up here somewhere for this one, I'm using a short extension in the 12 millimeter socket with my ratchet to break it free. And then I'll zip it out the rest of the way with my gun. Before I remove the case, I'm just gonna put a paint mark here where the end of the shaft is lined up with the inside of the actuator housing, just to give me an idea when we put it back on, if the shift lever moved on us or not. So now I should just be able to wiggle this and pull it right off, just like that. Okay, we're gonna get this on a bench and we're gonna start cleaning up all the gear oil out of there. And maybe, just maybe, when we clean this thing up and maybe blow it out with some compressed air, maybe this switch will actually work again and it's just compromised with a bunch of gear oil so maybe it's salvageable who knows now that we have the actuator off i want to talk about the timing of these gears so on the back side of this one remember we removed the two screws and we pulled it out and it has the electrical connectors that are part of the connectors that the plug plugs into on the harness this blue wheel has a small line on it and it's hard to see with all the gear oil on there i'm going to try to wipe it out and right now that line is pointing towards this part of this white piece. So I put a red paint mark there to let me know where that is so we don't mess it up. Now, in other videos that I've watched, they show that there is a timing mark right here. There's a notch right here. And in one of the positions, either locked or unlocked, that dial will be in line with that. So I was thinking that maybe we would see that. I'm gonna turn this dial back to where it was lined up before and leave it there. Here's another interesting thing to note. 
Viet said in the maintenance records when he bought the GX470, the previous owner paid for a repair of this actuator. They replaced the seal. And now let's see what this seal looks like. It is totally destroyed. You can see the metal band that creates tension on the sealing lip of the seal. It's totally compromised. So I think they installed it wrong and damaged it right from the get-go possibly, allowing gear oil to get past the shaft. So yeah, it's definitely what the problem is. And hopefully when we clean this all up and we blow out that switch and hopefully get most of the gear oil out of there, we'll put it back on and fingers crossed that it's now gonna signal to the four wheel drive ECU that the center diff lock is locked and becoming unlocked. So we have some cleaning to do. We wiped it out pretty good with some rags, but there's just so many little nooks and crannies to get in there. And I have this CRC electrical connector cleaner. I'm gonna spray some of that in there and then maybe use an air chuck to blow it out and see how clean we can get this. I'm really gonna be concentrating on that micro switch in there to make sure any gear oil that's compromising that switch gets out of there. Okay, we're just gonna keep on cleaning this and make it as nice as we possibly can and then we're gonna re-grease all the components and put it back together. So we noticed a good combo is hitting the components with the electronic cleaner and then immediately hitting it with the air gun and it works well to get the oil out of there. If you just spray the spray in there, it doesn't really do a good job of displacing all the oil. So a quick spray on the components with the electronic cleaner followed by some air from our little air compressor. We have the inside cleaned up pretty good and all the other associated parts cleaned up pretty good. Before we replace this damage seal and grease everything up and put it back onto the truck, we wanna do one other test for you. And this test is gonna tell you the timing of the gears. If, for instance, you found that your actuator was stuck in the locked position, we're gonna put the shaft back in and we're gonna line it up with that line that we made earlier, showing the position of the shaft when the center diff is unlocked. We're gonna take the primary gear and we're gonna get this back in and we're gonna line it up with the mark we put on the case. So this line on the wheel lined up with the mark in the case. We're gonna get this other wheel in here. We're gonna put this electrical connector with the blue timing gear on next and we currently have the blue dial in the position it was when we took it off so the little line is lined up with the red paint mark we put on there so now we're going to slide this back in you'll see that there's grooves right here and these grooves lines up with these ridges on this part of this piece so if you line those up it will slide in really easily and then it slides over these posts and then the blue gear engages with this little gear on the top of this primary gear. So it's snapped in place. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the shaft inboard, turning these wheels, and when the shaft gets fully into the case in the locked position, I'm gonna pull this back out and see where this blue dial is lining up at. I'm gonna push the shaft in while holding some pressure down on this gear and we'll see where the blue dial ends up when it's in the fully locked position. Okay, that's fully in. And this is what I thought would happen. The timing line on the blue gear is now lined up with this timing notch right here. And another way to look at the timing of this gear is if you put it on this cover the timing line will line up 
with this hole in the cover. This is one of the holes that captures a pin for one of the gears. That's another visual indicator that you have the blue timing mark in the right position. So the reason why I wanted to do that test is to show you where the blue dial should be and then where the main gear will be if you unfortunately found that your actuator was not working and your center diff was locked. So if you took it apart like we did, when you put it back together, you'll know where to put the blue dial and then you'll know where to put this dial. So it looks like this one is just a little bit offset from where it originally was when it was unlocked. So I'll put a paint mark right where that one is. So you can see the difference. It's a little bit off from the other one. We've now hopefully showed you the proper timing of the two gears, the blue gear and this gear when the center diff is in the lock position and when it's in the unlock position. And what I learned from watching a bunch of videos, this is very important. If you put it back together and the gears are not timed right, it's not gonna work properly and you're gonna find yourself pulling the damn thing apart again and trying to figure out where you went wrong. So by knowing this ahead of time, it enables you to get the timing right, but it also enables you to avoid that twisting and pulling of the unit off the transfer case. Now that you have confidence that you can get the gears timed right, you can do it just like we did. You can take the cover off, you can take the two screws out and pull this out, and then you could take these gears out, and this one too, and you'll know that you can now get this thing off the transfer case nice and easy, and you can get it back nice and easy without all this twisting and craziness that I've seen in other videos I watched. I think I've hit that home, hopefully. I blah blah enough. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna replace that bad seal. So now the question is, how do you get the seal out? In the videos I watched, people did struggle getting the seal out. And some people will use a metal pick to get it out, but what I'm gonna try first is this plastic spudger tool. And I wanna use this because it's plastic and it's not gonna mar up the case because if I dig in with a metal pick and I damage where the seal seats into, then maybe we're gonna get a leak. So I'm gonna try first with this. It's coming out in pieces. Okay, this thing is pretty hard to get out, just like I saw in the video. So I'm gonna work at this a little bit and then let you know how I did it. So it ends up, this seal was quite the fight to get out. Viet finally succeeded and he's gonna describe how he did it. So I tried to use this plastic pry. It actually didn't work, we had to use a pick. If you notice at the bottom, it's rubber and in the center, it's hard. So what I did is I took the pick, went down to the rubber, punctured it in and start prying it up slowly. Not only that I did one corner, I did all four corners. So bottom, side, top, and the other side and slowly working our way out. I actually took a lot of time to bring it out. So take your time prying it out. And what you wanna make sure, whatever tool you're using, you don't wanna mar up this surface. So if you got in with a sharp tool, screwdriver, pick tool, and you marred up this surface, then the gear oil could possibly get past the seal and then get into the actuator body and cause a problem like Viet had. So like Viet said, take your time and don't screw up the housing when you're getting that seal out, but it is hard to get out. So now to share a screw up. We thought we had the right seals for this job. It ends up we didn't have all the seals we needed. We have the seal that goes around this housing right here, but this seal, we didn't get the right one. So we go over to Lexus and we try to get the right seal. And they look it up and they say, we don't sell this seal for this housing right here. You have to buy the whole actuator, which costs like $1,500. So then we go to Toyota. Toyota will have it, right? Nope. We went to Toyota, they said the same thing. They do not sell 
this little seal, it only comes with the actuator, which is pretty freaking ridiculous because seals fail. So our, our only option is to order it from an Amazon seller or an eBay seller. We can get it quickest from an Amazon seller, but it's not gonna come in quick enough and I gotta go back to work. And so his truck is gonna sit in my garage for quite a few days before I get off work and we're both available on the same day to where we can finish the freaking job. So calling a timeout, we're gonna go get some food and some beers and then we'll come back on another day to finish this job and fingers crossed we've fixed the problem by cleaning out the gear oil and getting it all put back together. All right, we're back a few days later and we have the right seals. We got this seal kit from an Amazon seller. It comes with two of the small seals and then the bigger seal that goes around the housing that seals the actuator to the housing. And then these small seals seals the shaft to the housing. So no gear oil can get past and contaminate the actuator itself. So now we're gonna insert this thing. We had to look at some videos to figure out what the right orientation for the seal, which direction it goes into the actuator because the one that we pulled out was really mangled and we couldn't 100% tell which direction to insert it. So I'll show you the two sides. So you have the side where you can see the metal band that keeps tension on the ceiling lip of the seal. And then you have this more solid side where you can't see the rubber band. Now, normally when you're installing seals into an engine or a transmission, the metal band side always goes towards the area where the fluid is gonna be coming from. That's from my experience when I've installed crankshaft seals, camshaft seals, seals into a transfer case and transmission. It's always in that orientation with the rubber band side facing the fluid. Well, in this situation, when this actuator is gonna be bolted up to the transfer case, the fluid is gonna be coming from the transfer case towards the actuator. So we're gonna to wanna to install the seal with the rubber band side facing up. And I know it's kind of weird because most of us aren't used to installing it that way, but from the videos we looked up, every one of them had the seal installed in this orientation with the metal rubber band facing up towards you. And that's what we're gonna do. On the topic of making sure you don't damage the housing when you're removing the old seal, when I took a closer look at this, I noticed there was damage and we don't know if we did it when we were removing it or maybe a previous owner did it, but there was some obvious damage from pick marks. So what I did is I knocked off the high edges of those pick marks with a small screwdriver. I just went in there and scraped the tops of the sharp edges off to where I can put my finger in there and feel it's pretty smooth. But that's not a perfect fix. There's still some indentations there from where the pick dug away plastic. And so what I'm gonna do for extra insurance is I'm gonna put some Toyota FIPG in the hole to fill in those gaps to where no gear oil is hopefully gonna get past the shaft and contaminate the actuator again. So the FIPG I'm gonna be using is the same stuff that you would be using for transfer case applications, differential applications, and transmission applications. It's the seal packing 1281. To prep it, I got some alcohol on a rag and I cleaned up inside the hole. I'm gonna do the same with the seal. I'm gonna just make sure this outer surface of the seal is really clean and then we're gonna put some FIPG into the hole and we're gonna knock it in place. To apply the FIPG inside the hole, I'm just gonna use this flat blade screwdriver. I'm gonna get a little bit on the end and then I'm gonna smear it in, in those areas where I know there's some damage and I'm gonna to have to use my light to see better. We've got some of the FIPG in there, probably more than we need and we're gonna insert the seal. Again, the side where you can actually see the metal band is gonna be facing up towards you. Drop it in the hole. I'm first gonna tap this in a little bit to get it started, and then I'm gonna do the rest of the 
insertion with this short 14 millimeter half inch drive impact socket. <laughs> Actually, it's easier just to push it in with your hand. I've got it started with my hand and now I'm gonna put the socket on there and then just drive it in a little bit more. Is that fully seated? Feels like it's fully seated. We're good to go. The next seal we want to install is the big round O-ring that goes around the housing. This plate on top is a keeper for that O-ring. So you just take a JIS screwdriver or Phillips and remove this screw. And then this thing just pops right off. We got a little bit of a mess of FIPG here. We'll wipe this out. Okay, and then you could just grab a screwdriver and just lift this O-ring out of here. We're gonna wipe this up and then we're gonna insert the new one. So we're just gonna slip this new one on. And then we'll just get the keeper back in place. One thing to note is that you'll see that there's two holes here. For the GX470, they only use one shaft. On some Toyota and maybe Lexus, they have two shafts coming out of the actuator to manipulate gears inside the transfer case. So that's why there's another one here. It's my belief that this housing is used for a lot of different applications. And for the GX application, they just didn't drill this hole out so a second shaft could come through. This hole on the GX470 actuator is sealed, so there's no need for any seal right here. With the new O-rings on, we're ready to get the actuator back on to the transfer case. We're gonna do the reverse that we took it off. We're gonna slide it on, and then we're gonna get the gears installed while the actuator is on the transfer case. So here we go. All right, we're back underneath the truck. We got the truck jacked up. All four wheels are off the ground. I did a, a little bit of pre-greasing. I put this wheel and this stud that it turns on into the actuator. And you just have to remember that the bigger side of the gear, of this double gear, goes towards the motor and the smaller gear faces up. So I just used some white lithium grease and I greased the metal gear of the motor and I greased the plastic part of the wheel and I greased the shaft. And because the grease is viscous, it's holding it to where it won't drop out, which is nice because gravity is gonna be working against us when we're inserting this. I also put some lithium grease down here to where the primary gear interfaces with the shaft that goes into the transfer case. I put some lithium grease on the outside of the big O-ring because when I insert it into the transfer case housing, I don't want any of the friction from inserting it to hurt the O-ring. So th that's all that's for. And then I put some lithium grease on the gears of the shaft and I put a little bit also on the shaft here. So when the shaft is inserting through the seal, the seal isn't gonna get damaged. You could use some gear oil if you wanted to, but a little bit of grease will do the same thing. Okay, I'm gonna start inserting the shaft into the seal. You wanna go nice and gently, especially where the serrated teeth are, that you don't wanna displace that metal band that seals. Viet and I found out that the insertion of the shaft through the seal needs to be done super delicately because when you get to the part of the shaft where the seal seals to, the smooth part, not the serrated part where the gear interfaces with, if you don't easily wiggle it on and use some grease or gear oil to lubricate it, you can displace that metal band and you now mess up the seal and it's not gonna seal well. So we noticed that, we pulled it off because it didn't feel right and we saw that the rubber band was displaced. So we put it back in place behind the rubber lip of the seal and then we grabbed the shaft of the actuator that we got from Andrew and we were just trying to insert the shaft into the seal without displacing the metal band. And sometimes we get it, sometimes we wouldn't. The one technique that we saw that seemed to work pretty well, if you rotate the housing 
as you're going through the seal. So we first tested it out by twisting the borrowed one into the seal and it seemed to go in smoother than just pushing it in straight. So you have to use a little twisting movement and then you could hopefully get the shaft through the seal without displacing that metal band. The problem is, is once you get it sealed and the actuator is fully engaged with the transfer case, you don't really know 100% whether the rubber band stayed in place or it didn't stay in place. So it's a guessing game and we hope that we got it. Viet has some good ears and he could actually hear when the metal band was popping out. I don't know how the hell he can hear it, but he said he can hear it. I couldn't hear it. When you get to the part where the bigger o-ring is going into the case of the transfer case you have to push with a fair amount of firm pressure to pop it in place and it just kind of pops in we basically have to just hope that when the shaft went into the seal the metal band didn't get displaced and it's good to go i don't want to pull this thing out again because i got it in i pulled it out just to see if the metal band wasn't displaced and i had it i had it good so we went back in and we think we've got it. So anyways, <laughs> I'm not gonna move it anymore and let's just hope we got it. With the shaft we got from the actuator from Andrew and a new seal, we're gonna try to demonstrate what happens to the metal band in there when the shaft is going through the seal. So if it doesn't go in really well, see that time it went in and it didn't displace. Right there. You can see that the metal band came out from behind the rubber part of the seal and it popped out. And that's what was happening to us over and over and over again. So I'll pull the shaft out of the seal now and you could see it. You'll see that the rubber band came out. So what you'll do, you just have to push it back in and get it back behind the lip, just like that. So it doesn't take much to displace that metal band. And that's the real big stickler with doing it the way we're doing it is we're blind when we're installing it while this shaft is in the transfer case we can't see if the metal band got displaced the method that we believe is best is if you get it in there and then you just slowly twist the box and get the seal onto the shaft like that anyways i know we're talking a lot about this but this is super important. If you don't get this right, the repair is a failure because gear oil is now gonna get passed and get into the actuator box and mess up that switch again where it's not gonna work. So there it is there. That's enough talking about this seal situation. So now we're gonna put the gears in. I'm just lubricating this gear with some more lithium grease. This is gonna be a situation where we're gonna need an extra set of hands is lined up. I think maybe pull the shaft out just a little bit. Oop, too much. Get it back to that line that I had. I'm trying to get this line on the gear lined up with my original mark. I want that timing. There we go. So Viet's going to hold that for me. I'm going to get the other gear. I'm going to lubricate it. I'm going to lubricate this side of this other gear here. Now we'll slide this on. Well, actually, I'm gonna lubricate the shaft here. Okay, let go for a second. Okay, that slid in. Okay, now hold it, Viet. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of, on this gear too. Okay, let go for a second. I'm gonna lubricate this. I'm just lubricating all these gears that interface with each other. Now I'm gonna slide this connector in. So I'm gonna switch with Viet. I'm gonna have him let go. I almost forgot to mention, make sure you have the blue dial timed right before you put it back in. So you wanna get it in the position it was when you took it out. So this gear and the primary gear are timed correctly together to where it's gonna be able to send the correct signal to the four wheel drive ECU to tell you when you have the center diff locked and unlocked. Oh shit, I moved it. Fuck, I hope that didn't displace anything. 
Now that the electrical connector is in place, I'm gonna get the two screws installed that hold it in place. Okay, those are tight. One thing to note about the GX470 actuator compared to some other Toyota actuators is this piece is built in to the bottom cover and the nice thing about the GX470 because this is separate is that when you put this in place and screw it in this holds all the gears in place when it's integrated with this cover you have to somehow hold the gears in place while you're sliding the connector in and I've seen a video where a guy will slide a screwdriver in and hold pressure on the gear while sliding the connector in place so the gears don't drop out because gravity's working against you. Just know if you're using this video as a reference for an actuator that has the electrical connector integrated, you can use some type of tool like a long skinny screwdriver to hold pressure on the gears while you're sliding this in place. So we've got everything in place. These two gears, that gear, the electrical connector. We're ready to put the cover on. And then we'll get our screws in place. Now this one in the center, I can get in first. Then we can't forget this cover that's filthy. I guess we could have cleaned this up, but we didn't. Oh well. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna get this bolt in since that moved. Just so nothing moves on us, I'm gonna get this bolt in and almost snug. Okay, now I feel better about putting pressure on the screws with that secured. I've got all three 12 millimeter mounting bolts installed. I don't know the torque spec for it. I'm just gonna go by feel, use my best judgment. And then one on the other side here. Okay, those are all cinched up good. We gotta plug in our vacuum tube again. Okay, the vacuum tube's back in. We gotta plug the electrical connector back in. Okay, that's in. Now Viet lost some gear oil, so we're gonna take the fill plug off and we're gonna top off his gear oil because quite a bit got into the actuator and drained out. So we're gonna take this out with a 24 millimeter socket and then get our gear pump and some 75W90 gear oil and top it off. All right, so we're at the moment of truth. We've got the transmission in neutral, and you can see that with the center diff unlocked, I can turn the drive shaft. So now Viet is gonna get in there, he's gonna push the center diff lock button, and we're gonna see if it locks, and I can't turn this, just to confirm it's working like it did before. All right, he's gonna push the button. I'm gonna see what I can hear at the actuator, go ahead. Okay, it's doing the beeping sound. It's not locking. So hit it again. Okay, I heard it move. Now hit it again. Okay, I heard it again. So I think we had to hit the button to like go through the unlock and then lock. So I heard it in both directions that time. Yep, it's locked. Is it going solid on the dash? Yep, it's solid. It's solid? Let me show you guys. It's finally solid. Nice. Woo! All right, so you can see that we have a solid center diff lock light, which is awesome. It means that the repair worked. I'm gonna unlock it. And when it's really quiet, you could actually hear the actuator moving. When the vehicle's on, it would be impossible to hear that little motor moving. So then I'm gonna push it again, and we're gonna see that the center diff lock lights up and it's solid. There it is. All right, as you saw, our repair worked. That little switch that runs on the cam of the main gear was compromised by the gear oil and by cleaning it out really well and getting the electrical 
contacts dry, it's now properly sending the signal to the four wheel drive ECU that the center diff is locked or unlocked. And then it's sending the signal to the dash light to go from blinking to solid because the circuit has completed. The big question that Viet and I both have is when I inserted the actuator over the shaft through that small seal, did the little rubber band displace or did it stay where it should? We gotta just hope that it stayed in place. So what Viet is gonna do is he's periodically gonna take that cover off the bottom of the actuator and he's gonna hope that he sees no gear oil in there. If he does see gear oil in there, then that means the seal did get compromised and he's gonna have to do the job all over again. He's gonna have to pull the actuator off and he's gonna have to take the seal out, put a new one in, and then again, hope that he gets it in smooth to where that little rubber band doesn't get displaced. It's super hard and it's a little bit of luck, but with the right technique of gently rotating the case while you're getting the shaft through that seal, then that's the best advice I can give you. You have to be really gentle and just rock it back and forth and get it in there and hope that you got it in right. I definitely want to add it's a two-man job. Yeah. It's definitely not a one-man job. Yeah, it's better with two people. Yeah. So. And luckily we have another seal just in case. So I would have to say this repair was a success. We've now got a actuator that's properly letting the ECU know that the center diff is going into the lock position and going back to the unlock position. With all that said, we thank you for watching Toyota Time with Timmy the Tool Man and Sean and special guests Viet and Ton. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you get notified when we put up new content. Peace out, sick mods and sick GX470 center diff lock actuator repairs. Bye bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Sick mods.